Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today, I'd like to take a final look at plastic and elastic collisions with two bodies. And I'd like to ask a question. I'd like to start it off by saying, let's imagine that you're on an elastic collision. That's what you're dealing with. And you are sitting on top of cart two. All right. You're sitting on top of cart two, and you can't really see what's going on in your surroundings, but you can see that um, cart one is coming at you with some initial velocity. All right, And let's assume that it's fully elastic, so uh, you're going to have that full velocity transfer. So before, before the collision, you're looking out, and you're seeing this cart come towards you, and you're seeing it come towards you at some velocity. It's coming towards you at some velocity v naught. So it's relative velocity as it's coming right towards you. Okay. Then after the collision, you're shooting off the track. You're like you're flying away at the same velocity. You're uh, here. Let's get a pen on. You're flying away. Cart one is standing still. You're now leaving with that initial velocity v naught, So it looks to you like cart 1 is separating from you at some velocity v naught. So initially they come initially you have this velocity that's coming together and then suddenly it's going apart if it's a fully elastic collision. Now let's contrast that with what happens if it's a fully plastic collision. Fully plastic collision, you see this cart, you see cart 1 coming towards you and it's coming towards you with V naught and then bam you collide and you're going down the track but now you're stuck together so the relative velocity between the two of you is zero so with the elastic collision you see a car coming towards you at V naught and then it bounces away at the same velocity a fully plastic or a perfectly plastic collision the car comes in and it sticks in between those two is where most of reality exists. That there's some sort of, it's mildly elastic, mildly plastic, there's some energy loss, we're not sure. How do we understand the wide area between these two extremes? Today, we're going to look at the coefficient of restitution. We're going to try to understand how to use a body's absorption of energy to predict the outcome of multi-body collisions. Let's get started. First, let me start off with let's start off with a brief definition of the coefficient of restitution. All right, and it's simply a ratio. We usually use the letter e and it's the relative velocity between two bodies at the end of a collision divided by the relative velocity of whoops of two bodies before the collision so in our elastic state if you recall the relative velocity after the collision was v naught let's see what it would be and the initial relative velocity was also v naught, so the coefficient of restitution is 1. Likewise, if we do plastic, the coefficient of restitution is the final relative velocity, which as you recall was 0. They were stuck together, and the initial relative velocity was v naught, so we have a coefficient of restitution of 0. Well, let's take a look. What does this look like? Let's imagine our initial problem. Let's say that we're coming along with some cart. Here, let's, let's, let's scroll up, take a look at it. We have some cart, cart one, traveling at an initial velocity of V naught, and it's gonna smash into cart two, and I'm not saying it's elastic, I'm not saying it's plastic, I'm gonna say it's 70% elastic. So that means we have a coefficient of restitution of 0.7. Now what can we do? Well, we know we can't use our energy equation because we know that some of the energy is lost and we're not quite sure that we're going to say 70% of the energy is lost. All we know is that the ratios of the velocities are 0.7. But we do know that outside of that yellow, ooh, let's, let's erase this lest you be confused or 
tempted to think that that's some sort of force. That was just an illustration. Outside of the yellow in the horizontal direction, there's no forces, which means that there's no change in momentum. That means that this equation right here, we're going to say the masses are the same. This equation right here is still the same. So we have one equation, one unknown. Let's try and solve this. I'm sorry, two unknowns with one equation. Let's bring that down here. Coefficient of restitution. So our first equation is V naught equals the final velocity plus of one plus the final velocity of two. Now let's use our coefficient of restitution to come up with our second equation or see if we can come up with something. We know that E equals 0.7. The final relative velocity is going to be velocity of 2 minus velocity of 1. And the initial relative velocity, well we know that, the initial relative velocity is simply going to be V naught. Cart 1 was coming with an initial velocity. Now we have something we can work with. Two equations, two unknowns, we can solve. Go ahead and put the video on pause, see what you come up with, and when we regroup we'll compare answers. Welcome back to our calculations. Hopefully you ended up with these two solutions right here, and you see that the final velocity of 1 was a 0.15 v naught, so it slowed down enormously. The final velocity of CART 2 was at 0.85 v naught, so it's a lot of the energy was transferred. Would we expect that? Well, we said that the coefficient of restitution was 0.7. That seems fairly high. It's not 0.99, but you know, it's not 0.01 either. So we'd expect a fair bit of the velocity to be transferred. And in fact, that's what we see. We see a lot of energy or a lot of velocity being transferred, hence a lot of energy being transferred to VF2 and only a little bit staying with CART1. And as a matter of fact, this would mean if we were to run our energy analysis, we'd see that more of the translational or the moving energy was conserved. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, if your coefficient of restitution is high, that means you're closer to a fully elastic collision, which means, remember that spring that kind of had a trigger? Maybe that trigger doesn't activate until most of the spring is gone. So the more of this spring, this perfect spring that can actually function, the more elastic we have something, the higher the coefficient of restitution. I hope this gives you a little bit of a feel of how to use the coefficient of restitution as well as its deeper meaning in multi-body collisions.